everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you back to uh, another uh, show of this uh, video series that we are doing myself and my dear brother David Wood, who's with me here in studio, uh, concerning Islam and atheism and dealing with this new movement or a uh, new trend that is being uh, discussed or uh, noticed. Uh, in terms of uh, a lot of these young Muslims, especially in the Middle East, who are gravitating towards at least calling themselves atheists, whether they uh, completely embrace or understand what does that mean or not, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's debatable. However, we chose this particular topic to make that comparison between uh, uh, basically a religion like Islam and how can a person who was living that kind of life could possibly declare themselves to be atheists, rejecting all manners of religion, give or take, and are they making the right choice, and is this a healthy trend in terms of allowing evangelism to become easier or not? So, last time we went through what is called the uh, meaning of life questions, and we addressed at least two of those questions. The first one was, what am I? And the second one was, what's my purpose? And David, thank you again for mm -hmm. being here with me. And, uh, you know, these two questions that we dealt with, you showed some uh, amazing quotes from uh, atheists who are leaders among the uh, atheism community, if you wish. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Richard Dawkins, uh, uh, Nye, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the science uh, guy. Uh, what is it that we are going to deal with today? I mean, I know there is another question that we left, which is, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so we'll go ahead and look at the, the, the remaining questions of meaning. Did want to recap the quote from... Uh, from Richard Dawkins, just because, again, when I say stuff like this, when I say, hey, according to atheism, you're just, you know, you're, you're a, a lump of cells, and that lump of cells is, is uh, built by, according to the instructions of, of DNA, and DNA is just there to, to make sure it gets replicated. Your, your entire body, uh, all your abilities and so on, they're just, you're a fancy machine for propagating DNA. They say, ah, don't, re don't, don't misrepresent our position. But then you got people like Richard Dawkins, again, possibly the most popular atheist in the world, saying exactly that. So let's go ahead and check out the uh, Dawkins quote one more time before we uh, go on. So Dawkins declares, we are machines built by DNA whose purpose is to make more copies of the same DNA. This is exactly what we are for. We are machines for propagating DNA, and the propagation of DNA is a self-sustaining process. It is every living object's sole reason for living. It is every living object's sole reason for living. So, you now, just to be clear, you can have various reasons for doing things in life, and so on. Dawkins' point is that your sort of your ultimate reason, your only real reason for why you're here and alive is that you are a machine for propagating DNA. Uh, any other tasks that you have are, are, are sort of part of that, part of that basic fundamental, um, right. fundamental task. And so, um, so the, we, we have our, our answers to our, our, our first two questions of meaning of, That's right. of what, what, what we are and what's our purpose according to atheism. Um, so the next one would be kind of uh, how, did we, how did we get here? Or how did, how did I get here? And um, here again, uh, atheism is going to give a very different answer to that question from what you know, a theistic system like, like Christianity would. So how did I get here according to atheism? Well, human beings, all living, all, living, uh, all life forms are machines for propagating DNA. How did I get here? The sort of most significant answer I could give to that is, well, my ancestors did a better job propagating DNA, right? That's why I'm here, right? The, if you go back through my family line, those people did a better job passing on their DNA, passing on that molecule than other people who didn't do it, right? In mm -hmm. other words, if you, uh, if you were born and you, you didn't um, pass on your DNA because you got killed or because you couldn't, you couldn't find food or because you couldn't defeat an enemy or something like that, you didn't pass on your DNA and then you're not here. Uh, your, your, your descendants are not here. The people who actually were able to pass on their DNA, um, they're the ones who are, who are here right now. So why am I here? How did I get here right now, according to 
atheism, the most relevant response is my ancestors did a better job at finding mates and having children and, uh, you know, building a spear to fight off an enemy. They did a better job finding food. And that's the reason that, that I'm here right now. So that's the answer you'd get on atheism. And uh, any atheist who's being honest would would have to agree with that. What, what, what do you say? What, what do you think why I'm, I'm here right now? That's that's the answer. Um, whereas from a theistic perspective, there are lots of reasons we're here. So it's still going to involve things like, you know, our parents and things like that. But the 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 main crucial answer, the main crucial response to the question from a theistic perspective is that I'm created by God. Amen. Right? I'm created by God. I'm sustained by God. So. Once again, you get very different kinds of answers. I'm here as just those people back then did a better job at having sex and finding food, and that's why I'm here, versus the creator of the universe created me. And so, again, these, these, are, these are going to radically affect our view of the, the meaning of life. That's right. That's right. Um, there is the next question, where am I going? Yeah, so uh, notice we got where did I come from and then where am I going? And so if you ask an atheist, according to atheism and according to that worldview, where are we headed? Where are we going? The obvious answer is, is death. There'll be some stopping points along the way, but we're headed to our death both as individuals and collectively, right? Um, the amount of energy in the universe is being used, in, is being used up. All the energy that is in a usable form is over time being changed into a non-usable form. And so that you eventually end up with what's called the heat death of the universe, right? Mm -hmm. There's just no more usable energy. And so, <clears throat> but we, you know, from, from an atheist perspective, we will, have, we will have gone out of existence long, long, long before that. So um, I'm heading for the end of my life, you're heading for the end of your life, and humanity is heading for extinction eventually, right? Might be, 50 years from now, if we all blow each other up or something like that, uh, might be thousands or even millions of years from now if we somehow manage to, to keep going. But eventually, we're all gone, and what's left over will not care that we were ever even here. So um, that's where we're headed. We're headed for extinction, the end of everything, according to atheism. According to something like Christianity or, or even to Islam, where are we headed? Well, you know, there are various stopping places, but death is just another is another stopping place. And so we're actually headed for uh, for some sort of eternal life. Uh, life continues beyond the grave. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. once again, far more far more significant from a theistic perspective than uh, than what you have available on atheism. Yep, that's true. That's true. And interesting, of course, the Bible talks about, you know, uh, Jesus, for instance, showed us where we're going. At least as believers, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. At least as a believer, I know where I'm headed. The Bible talks also about the destiny for those who do not believe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a fascinating thing. And obviously, we're talking about Muslims who do believe in God, who do believe that there is a purpose, at least for them, who do believe uh, uh, that God created them, and also know that there is a final destiny as well beyond death. So it, it is always fascinating to me to see how someone can make that shift in their worldview mm -hmm. or drastic shift. Um, uh, and I think I, I should point out, I think one of the things that the, the, the new atheism does, whereas the sort of old atheism didn't. The, the old atheism is basically, hey, you know, your religious talk is a bunch of nonsense, but, you know, we don't really care what you believe. It doesn't matter because we're atheists, right? Mm -hmm. That was the old atheism. The new atheism said, no, religion's going to destroy the world. It's going to end science if we don't do something about it. And so what it did was it, it gave people that a sense of purpose, right? Like we have to save the world from religion. Us atheists have to save the world from religion. And so mm -hmm. it gave them a sort of replacement um, meaning in life. We're, we're the saviors of, of humanity. If we, don't go out and, if we don't go out and do something, religion's just gonna ruin everything and, and, and kill us all. And uh, so, but notice it's, yeah, you can give yourself a sort of temporary meaning like that. But I mean, if you were to step back and say, well, you know, what's the, what's the real point of it all, right? Um, you know, the things you think religion is going to do to the world and that you're not going to do to the world. One, I don't believe you. I mean, we, we've seen the track records of atheist regimes in the world. They tend to be the bloodiest in all of history, right? I mean, if you look at communist China and communist Russia and things like, like that, they, 
they slaughtered more people than anyone else in, in history. So I don't believe you when you say, ah, but you know, atheists would, would control things so much better. Um, but even, even if you thought that, what, what's the point, right? What, what's, the, what's the point of thinking, I could do a little bit, a little bit better? Uh, again, you can have, this goes back to the analogy from the last video, um, you know, a vegan has food options, but they're, they're just uh, far narrower options than are available to people who, who aren't vegans. And likewise, yes, you can have some sort of meaning in life, but it's just not, it's not the sort of meaning that has any sort of ultimate significance. It's just, you know, here's what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah, there's no real point to it, but I'm going to go out and fight real hard for this thing that doesn't really matter. Which really defeats the purpose anyway, right? So the next question we have then uh, is, uh, what am I worth? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now think about what your what your what your value is according to atheism. Uh, we've already seen you're a machine for propagating DNA, so you're valuable to that molecule. You you have value to that molecule. You are the machine that goes out and, and propagates it. But the, mo- the molecule is a mindless little molecule. Um, now, j- just to be clear, because we, we don't you know we, we want to be honest about the position of, of atheists. There were atheists who say you know they 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 uh, um, they find their lives very worthwhile and um, they have relationships with other people and they value other people and they are valued by other people, their friends and their family members and so on. Um, so they, they have worth in the, in the sense that they have value to uh, other people. But, but here again, like with the example of veganism, it's nothing beyond that, right? Um, you can, uh, again, you can make copies of DNA. You have value in, in, in that sense. You uh, might have value to future generations if you make some important contribution to society or something like that. So you can have limited value, but again, it's, it's limited, right? You don't have the sort of uh, ultimate value that um, is, uh, is available on, on theism. Let me give, uh, we already talked about uh, Bill Nye, the science guy last time. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me give a, a different quote by him. Uh, Bill Nye says, um, as I learned more about evolution, I realized that from nature's point of view, you and I ain't such a big deal. Humans are just another species on this planet trying to make a go of it, trying to pass on our genes into the future, just like chrysanthemums, muskrats, sea jellies, poison ivy, and bumblebees. So he's saying, well, you know, from nature, nature doesn't care, right? You've got all these different species. They're all passing on genetic information. Why do we think we're so special? We're not. We're just, we're just another thing. So what are we worth? Well, not a whole lot. Now, compare that to an answer you get from something like Christianity. What are we worth? In Christianity, we are worth so much that God entered creation to die for us, right? The almighty creator of the universe entered creation to die on our behalf. That means we're worth a lot. We are worth a whole lot. Once again, very different answers that you get from from theism and atheism. Amen. Now let's look at um, the next question. Uh, which is basically the last question in that series. Uh, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the kind of, what, what, what's the point to our lives and to what we do, to our existence? What's, what's, what's the point of it all? Um, here, once again, I don't want to... Uh, <laughs> when, when I talk about atheism and the, and the implications of atheism, um, these are things that I realized about atheism when I was an atheist. So this isn't me as a Christian trying to uh, insult another position. This is, these are the implications of atheism. Most atheists do not, do not recognize these. They don't sit back and think, this is where my worldview leads. Mm-hmm. Um, but nevertheless, if I were to say, if I were to say, here are the implications of atheism, it's pretty, it's pretty depressing. Um, they'll say, nope, I'm misrepresenting them. Uh, so uh, for this, I'll go ahead and quote one of the, um, trying to think, possibly the most uh, popular atheist intellectual of the 20th century. So now it's Dawkins. I reluctantly call him uh, an intellectual atheist. He is, he is an intellectual, he's a biologist, and he is an atheist, but not necessarily an intellectual atheist in the sense that he's, he's very sloppy when he, in, in that, like you can be an expert in one area and be very sloppy in another area, right? You could be a, you could be a brilliant chemist over here and be a, uh, a horrible mathematician or something like that. So you can, you could, uh, you could, um, yeah, you could be pretty sloppy. Although if you're going to be a great chemist, you, you should get your mathematics down. Um, whereas Bertrand Russell, he's a philosopher. So he's very focused on, um, arguments and 
clarifying arguments and things like that. But uh, let's go ahead and, and check out a quotation from Bertrand Russell. And he's going to tell, uh, he's, going to t he's going to answer this question for us. He's going to say, um, he's going to answer, what, what's the point? What's the point of all of this from an atheistic perspective? So this is Bertrand Russell, uh, possibly the most influential atheist intellectual of the 20th century. He says, man is the product of causes which had no provision of the end they were achieving. His origin, his growth, his hopes and fears, his loves and his beliefs are but the outcome of accidental collocations of atoms. No fire, no heroism, no intensity of thought and feeling can preserve an individual life beyond the grave. All the labors of the ages, all the devotion, all the inspiration, all the noonday brightness of human genius are destined to extinction and the vast death of the solar system and the whole temple of man's achievement must inevitably be buried beneath the debris of a universe in ruins. All these things, if not quite beyond dispute, are yet so nearly certain that no philosophy which rejects them can hope to stand. Only within the scaffolding of these truths, only on the firm foundation of unyielding despair, can the soul's habitation henceforth be safely built. So this is a guy who recognized the implications of atheism. Um, everything we do, everything we strive for, everything we strive to accomplish is all destined to be buried. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that's going to remember us or, so he's, he's recognizing it and saying, what's the result of that? It's complete despair should be the result of that. That we're all just dead. We're all going to die. It's all been for nothing. We have to recognize that. And only upon this, the only possible foundation can we construct our, our sort of view of what we're what we're going to do and why we're here and so on. Yeah, very bleak, uh, uh, you know, views. And it really t contrasts this with the scripture, for instance. Uh, you know, when you look at the Bible, um, you know, starting from the book of Genesis, and it says clearly that man, you can see the theme of creation, that man was the pinnacle of that creation, uh, that God himself got involved in the process uh, of making man from the dust of the earth and breathing life into their nostril. Uh, it says that basically um, God made man in the image uh, of God. He gave man work. I mean, why would you give man work if there is no purpose in life to begin with? God had fellowship with man, and God uh, also expect man to have fellowship with others in a relationship. Marriage is representation of God. Uh, God ma gave man dominion over the whole earth, actually, not just a portion of it. That indicates also accountability. That indicates so many things, you know, that are... Uh, basically banking on all of this. The book of Revelation is a book of restoration, actually. Uh, why would God care to restore things back to the way they were if there is no meaning in life? I mean, why would God care about sending his son to die on the cross if sin means nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. So all of these are really important questions, at least for, uh, I want to address them to my Muslim friends. I mean, obviously, atheists are welcome to interact with us, uh, with David, with myself about this. But nevertheless, we want those who are Muslims who are claiming now to be atheists to wrestle with these kind of things. I mean, honestly, it baffles me how a Muslim who thinks the God of the Bible is the God of the Quran can even argue uh, against uh, something like this. Nevertheless, that the fact that now you are starting to realize that the true God of the Bible is in no way, shape, or form the God of the Quran. And that in and of itself should force a Muslim just to investigate. And I remember you saying, you know, you can't just jump from one worldview to the other without doing proper investigation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get it why a Muslim is disillusioned about Islam. Mm -hmm. No doubt, you know, I felt betrayed when I discovered that Jesus was hidden from me, the true Jesus, I should say. I felt like I was used for all of my life. I, I felt actually Muslims have been victimized for 14 centuries, you know. I mean, I, I felt anger, no doubt about it. But I'm thankful that I didn't direct this anger against God. I directed against Islam and the founder of Islam, mm -hmm. basically. So that's really our hope uh, that our Muslim friends who are disillusioned by Islam, that they will consider at least giving Christ a chance. Anything else you want to add to that, brother? Oh, yeah. It's just uh, it's, we're talking about jumping from, you know, worldview jumping, you know, worldview hopping or something like that. Um, we, obvious, we, we obviously have our issues with Islam, but Islam can answer a bunch of the, the, the big questions about, you know, people's, you know, man's purpose and things like that. 
So to go from something like that to atheism without thinking about that, right? Without thinking about, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this and I'm adopting this other worldview where according to that worldview, I'm a machine for propagating DNA. Um, that's what I am, that's what my purpose is. Um, I, my real reason that I'm here is that my ancestors uh, had more sex and, um, and found more food than the ones who didn't. And that where I'm going, I'm just I'm just headed for distinction, and that there's there's really no point to it all. And you know, we, uh, any any view of ourselves has to be founded on an, uh, 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 nothing but despair. Um, before you sort of sign on for that, because that those implications are so massive, that's a paradigm example of where you should say, hang on, before I agree to that, let me make sure I at least explore if, you know, some of the main options. And one of the main options would be Christianity. And so, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, David, this kind of like concludes our first part of this series. Now, where are we going from here? So the, for the benefit of our audience. Well, now we're going to uh, turn our attention to morality. We're going to uh, compare the implications on morality for uh, that, that theism and atheism would have. Uh, in other words, um, our beliefs about right and wrong, good and bad, what's the status of those beliefs? If theism is true, what's the status of those beliefs? If atheism is true, uh, we'll, also, uh, we'll also have a, uh, a video on looking at a moral argument for the existence of God. So if you take these moral issues seriously, if you take objections to Muhammad's character seriously, does that have actual implications about what you should believe? Mm -hmm. And is it actually a problem for uh, atheism? So we'll, we'll look at those and then after that we're going to go through some of the problems that uh, even many atheists acknowledge about Muhammad and see His moral if, you actions and if you acknowledge those as problems, if you say that what he did there was, was immoral, then is that consistent with your worldview as an atheist, or are you actually smuggling your, you know, smuggling Christian beliefs, That's theistic right. beliefs, into your objections? Excellent. Thank you so much, and hopefully everybody uh, who is uh, following uh, us on this series uh, is excited about the stuff that we've shared so far. And as always, we uh, recommend that you go ahead and share it with others as well, whether on Facebook, uh, uh, through other means as well, and platforms to help those who are seeking. Uh, uh, you know, be exposed to these kind of arguments that we're raising. Of course, no better uh, uh, person here to share with me about, uh, you know, the topic of Islam and athe uh, atheism than my dear brother David Wood. We both represent these different views, and I hope that you will find it helpful. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We can't make these quality videos without the help of partners like you. So please, Consider becoming a Patreon supporter today at patreon.com forward slash Sierra International. I want to make sure you always get notified when we release a new video. So please click the bell to be notified. And of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, please click the thumbs up. Thank you.